Hello everyone, this is Vishwas and uh, today I am starting brand new series on Webpack. I am doing software development from past 10 plus years and uh, as a part of this series, I will share all the knowledge that I have built around the Webpack. Initially, we will start from the Webpack basics and uh, then we will move to the advanced topic with practical implementation. Finally, we will also create a couple of demo projects from scratch. Uh, one is with traditional way with uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And the uh, other one we will create with the single page application with React. Webpack is most popular build tool and widely used, especially in current world, where we have reach and single page applications. Reach meaning application with lots of dynamic features. So let's begin. Before starting on Webpack, uh, let's understand how the applications are built uh, before Webpack, what are the different approaches, what challenges we are facing, and how Webpack help us to resolve those problems. So let's start with uh, very old days where we have uh, the application with large JavaScript files. That means the single page application is having only a few JavaScript files. Um, consider one is managing to all the internal code, one is managing the external code, and uh, one may be using some payment options. For that, we have a separate JavaScript file. And all those JavaScript files contain large amount of code. Um, their size is large. And with this approach, we are facing a uh, few challenges. So let's understand those challenges now. Uh, first thing, debugging is difficult as we have a large JavaScript file. Whenever we have any uh, issues, uh, the debugging code will be more difficult. Uh, then working on code changes will be hard. Consider any of the new developer is joining and he is working on uh, modifying some of the JavaScript file then understanding the code and working on it will be really challenge. Uh, then third point is uh, the failure impact is more, right? If, if any of the code issue in single file, the impact is more because multiple workflows are shared in same JavaScript file. And then we will also face the scoping issue, right? If we have the multiple variable with same name, as they are present in same file, we we will be facing or we are facing issues with uh, scoping. Uh, to resolve these challenges, uh, people started using the next approach and uh, that approach is uh, creating the applications with smaller JavaScript files. Uh, that means consider this is e-commerce application and for each workflow, we will create the separate JavaScript file. Um, consider this is main.js and uh, this is handling the common part of the application. Then we have authentication, we have cart, we have products, payment, um, order, we have some external dependencies and we also have help and support. So considering each workflow, we have a separate JavaScript file. This approach is slightly better than the previous one because now uh, debugging things are more easier. Uh, if any of the code failure happens, that is impacting only single workflow of the application and also issues with uh, scoping is not there, right? We have a smaller file and uh, uh, managing those will be easy now. But with this approach, we also have uh, multiple challenges. Now let understand those challenges. The first is order of execution is important, right? Uh, when we have our initial HTML file and when we are uh, adding our script file there, the order is important. Uh, if, if we uh, mess with the order, the chances of the application is uh, breaking down is more. Then it is harder to manage, right? If you, if you go with the HTML approach where we are um, using the... Um, JavaScript file there, or also if you go with 
common js approach right where we are importing one javascript file into another managing all those javascript file together will be difficult and third point is network load increases right as we have multiple javascript files and whenever we load application the multiple network request goes and uh, it will it will slow down our application and especially this is more important in mobile applications right where we have more network call and uh, it will basically slow down the our application now let's understand the server side templating approach uh, where uh, we have a client and uh, we have a backend server right and uh, whenever client want any data the client will request for the html document server will create that document and send that document back to ui then if client is performing any activity again the request is made to the server for sending the html document and server will send that document right with this approach uh, the client is lightweight and all the data html javascript that are coming from the server but now technology is changing and people are moving to single page applications right where we can use the framework like um, angular view or libraries like react to make our development much more easier right so now let's understand this single page application approach where when application loads server will only send the initial uh, minimal html file and then client is having all the javascript code and it is managing all the further activities at client level itself that means if user is doing some activity uh, showing the appropriate page to user is handled by uh, client itself also with single page applications we are structuring our code in much better manner here we have the components with javascript or typescript files uh, then we have a different uh, js files for services that means we can make the api call then we have separate files for uh, handling the state management um, then we have a separate utility file where we can manage some common utility functions and now when you talk about the technology changes we we can use any libraries right uh, instead of using the css we can use css preprocessor we can use typescript um, we can use the different uh, external library like lodash uh, d3js um, then we can have multiple images css all those assets are managed by client itself and now with this single page approach we also have some challenges right now let's understand all the challenges the first challenge is large javascript code on client with multiple dependencies now if you want to resolve that problem we need to break down our javascript file and minify those file for the faster load so that our uh, web page load faster to the users now third third challenge is we are using different latest feature in our application and to understand that feature by older browser or legacy browser we need to use the different polyfills as we saw if you go with any approach right the old uh, larger javascript file or then uh, the application with smaller javascript files or even the traditional single page application approach right in each approach we have some challenges and now webpack comes in picture and webpack help us to resolve all these challenges in different approaches so let's understand it now let us first understand the application with smaller javascript uh, application where we are facing couple of challenges right the first one is managing the dependency is harder and second one is um, multiple network call for each javascript file so webpack help us here now webpack expect us to provide the entry file that means the first file 
uh, that will start our application and after that webpack will take care of everything that means managing the dependency between all these files and creating the uh, final bundle with single javascript file that bundle is minified optimized compressed and less in size as compared to the javascript file that we have so this is how webpack is helping with smaller javascript file approach now let understand how webpack help us with the single page applications approach in single page application things are similar we need to provide the initial entry file then webpack go through all the dependencies and create the dependency graph with the dependency hierarchy then it will create the final bundle file it could be a single or multiple uh, file based on your configuration um, then it will also take care necessary conversion of the typescript into the respective javascript bundle file so uh, here we have the final bundle with all the javascript code containing all the dependencies in correct order our bundle is optimized minified and compressed it will also take care of converting the necessary css preprocessor file into the css file and then it will take care of moving the static asset like images into the final bundle and now this final bundle will having all your code for running the application now you can see why webpack is so popular right uh, it it do the tremendous job for us now just to summarize the things uh, let's understand how exactly webpack works uh, so webpack expecting one or more entry file just as a starting point then it will create the dependency graph uh, then it will expect couple of steps here the first one we require the different kind of loaders to handle the different file type then we will require the different plugins to perform the global transformation and finally we will be having output with optimized bundle now let's understand what are the different things webpack can do uh, like just to summarize in short uh, webpack load the different file assets then it creates a dependency graph uh, it will optimize your production build it will also do the bundle splitting it will also do hot module replacement when we are doing the local development it help us to remove the dead code elimination we call it as a tree shaking uh, it will also do the module federation through which we can uh, perform the or achieve the micro front end uh, then it will do the caching as well as it will remove the duplicate code so this is all initial theory part about the webpack as the next video we will start with actual implementation so stay tuned for next video and thank you